talking a lot today as well about how important it is to have um, sort of public and private sector experience. So many of you who have been up on this stage today and so many conversations we've had in the hallways um, have revolved around this idea of we need to have both people, but we need to have workers who are exposed to both the public and private sector. And I'm really glad to say that our next speaker is one of those people. He was a CISO at AIG, and now he's a CISO at CIA. So Rich Bage, um, welcome. And let's talk a little bit about enterprise security. All right, so um, what is the future of enterprise security? I think the best way to start that off is actually a, a quote by Chris Inglis, which is, um, cyber defense is the new offense. When you think about that statement, how do you operationalize that? Well, in the commercial world, it's basically saying cybersecurity is a business enabler. It's basically using cybersecurity to enable your enterprise to prevent, obviously, any type of loss or destruction. In the government spaces, that enabler is to the mission. And what, I, what is ironic is no offensive operation should ever be performed without first understanding your defensive posture, because that defensive posture puts you at greater risk. Because once you go on the offensive, the um, possibility and probability for a um, defensive attack towards you increases significantly. So when it comes to enterprise security, it's really about figuring out how to provide the organization a view quantitatively on the cybersecurity defense posture of the organization. So there are three things to think about when that happens. One of it is know it, the second is get it, and the third part is use it. And as simple as that sounds, what does that mean from a cybersecurity standpoint? Well, knowing about it means there is a tremendous amount of information in your environment that an adversary is looking to potentially get their hands on to understand and exploit you. The simplicity of that are simple things. Are you patched? Do you know your vulnerability management? What's your end of life cycle? What's your perimeter look like? How many people have privilege access? All of these types of things are what we like to always call basic hygiene basic good IT practices, which ultimately are good cyber practices. But you have to know what information you need to get in order to operationalize it. So the second phase of that is when you know it, you have to be able to get it. And you have to be able to get it in somewhat real time. So that information and getting it, what does that allow you to do? It allows you to operationalize it. It allows you to think about it and put it in the potential hands of an operator, a leader, a mission-oriented, business-oriented, principal, secretary, regardless. But that information needs to be used. The third part of it, use it. Now here's where I'm going to focus a little bit more, is on the use of the information. And this is where enterprise security is going. Because the other two things that I've described to you They've been practices for the last 10 or 15 years, if you talk to any cybersecurity professional. But this is where we're going to. It's now having the ability, when we say use it, what does that mean? When we talk about information security and the practices, one big piece is what we like to call assurance. And that's basically, are our controls working in the fashion that they're supposed to work? Kevin Mandigan quickly passed over it earlier today. How do we do that? There are many ways, but one of those is through attack simulation. So think about being able to provide your senior executives, whether you're on the commercial side or the government side, a view that says, here is your cyber defense posture. Here is truth. Data is truth. If you can't provide the data, then you're, you're talking about hypotheticals. So once you have the data and you can provide them, this is your material state. Here is your cyber risk report card. How do you make it real? Well, through attack simulation or other techniques, what you're basically doing is you're utilizing indications, indicators of compromise 
IOCs, tactics, techniques, and um, practices, TTPs, inject it into a simulation model that basically takes these different techniques that are used by particular actors, puts it into your environment, and really tests your controls. So all those things that we say we're doing, and we think we're doing, and we believe we're doing, which by the way are normally the reasons for breaches, because you forgot to close a port, you thought something was configured, you thought you patched it, all of those things come into, come into play, or you think you're blocking a particular type of service. Well, unless you actually test it, you won't know. So through this simulation-like approach, you can now come up quantitatively to say, are my controls actually working? And then your customers, right, your leadership that need to make risk-based decisions now can understand the true nature of their cyber defense posture to understand it. Let me put into a real example. When the Russian-Ukraine outbreak began, I, I was not in government at that point, I was back in the commercial sector, but the number one question was from every board of director, what's the impact, what's my risk to this from a cyber standpoint? And there are many different ways that people address this issue. But what I found to be the best way was basically going and looking at your environment, understanding it, understanding your cyber defense posture, and then, by the way, taking all the great information that was shared across the public and private partnership, wonderful TTPs and IOCs were being shared, right? There was no competitive advantage out there. There was no Intel service that I knew of commercially that was withholding. And boy, we were able to rapidly get some real actionable information out of the U.S. government also as it relates to it. And on the receiving end, we took that information, we took those IOCs TT and TTPs, put them into the simulator, and we were able to answer the question and go back to the board of directors and say, based on all known intelligence that's been provided to us, based on our current control set, and based on our connectivity to, to Russia, if Russia were to exploit, based on the intelligence that provided and the vulnerabilities that we know that they were using, the techniques, we had an X percentage, let's just make it up and say 70% chance that our controls would work. Now, from that, you can go through a decision process. Is that in your risk appetite, or did you want to take further actions? Maybe you disconnect totally from Russia as one of those. So that's a real example. I'll take it up with just one more level. If you're running this, these scenarios and you're understanding and looking at the capability and measuring your effectiveness, you can then decide where your investments go. Because suddenly you can find out, oh gosh, I really can't control lateral movement. Oh my gosh, I really can't control a malware outbreak. Um, all those types of things, which then should drive your risk calculus, which ultimately will drive your investment strategy, which will then drive your prioritization of the tools and techniques that you want to put in place. So um, if I go back to where I started, which was cyber defense is the new offense, it truly is. But what it is, it's providing a view of your cyber defense posture, operationalizing it so you can understand that when a particular adversary, enemy, individual, bad actor, country state, wants to turn its weaponry at you based on all known intelligence, there is a way to understand the effectiveness of your controls. So the future of enterprise security is not just about simplistic configuration management and patching, it's about operationalizing the environment, simulating the attack, quantifying the risk, and then most importantly, getting that information quickly to the right decision makers so that they can utilize it in the best way possible to make the best risk-based decisions. I don't know if we have a couple of minutes for questions or not. Oh, I guess I'm running the show. All right, we got time for questions. This is fun. This must be a test. Okay, thanks. All right. Or questions. We're just going to do a quick round.